Okay, I think a lot of people like machine learning a lot here. So I see a lot of people. It's just 15 minutes talk. So I'll go to just brief. And then if you are very interested about our project, you can go to our GitHub and our website. And then you can get the um, source code. And then you can get some feedback. So our topic is the power of the real-time machine learning first. Let me introduce myself. My name is Uchi Lucas. I'm not a scientist. I'm working for Qatar Computing Research Institute, but I'm not a scientist. Well, I don't have a PhD. I don't do algebra. I don't do any math formula. I do code. I design. I'm an architect. Luckily, I got the very good luck. Like I was in, I'm from Chicago. So one day I was at home, and then my friends called me, I have a wonderful project for you. Do you want to move? And so, OK, why not? So I thought in the US. And they said, but you have to move to Qatar. So I said, Where's well, Qatar? So I Googled it, and that's somewhere in the Middle East. So I look at, I talked to him, like he said, it's a fantastic project. And he talked about all the buzzwords, like a big data and machine learning, and such a good researchers, you know, and then MIT. So I said, OK, it sounds good. So I packed. I talked to my daughter, let's go to Middle East. So this I moved. I moved to Qatar about three years ago, so I worked a lot of researchers who is researching about the crisis and the digester. They are research about the, like a natural digester or a man-made digester, something like a refugee or a civil war and something like that. So here's my email, just this. So they're like a, in digester, actually, digester affective communities are digital community. Why? Because when digester happen, even though in Divox, everybody is using mobile or social media. It's very hard to find the, nobody is using social media. So especially when digester happen, everybody is communicate through the social media and then mobile technology. So we found a lot of there's a very actionable kind of inside information is in there. The question is how we can find this inside information. It cannot be ad hoc. It has to be in real time. It's very challenging because uh, it's, uh, it's uh, like a find the needle in the haystack. This haystack is uh, growing, growing, growing. But how we can find this actionable information in real time? That is a uh, challenging in the humanitarian community. So when my friends call, he was an innovation lab director. So he has the project with the UN. So UN do a lot of a response of the natural digester. So they want to start some project using the machine learning because it was a top trend. So that's how it started. So look at this. It's a kind of a Nepal cases. When Nepal happen, a lot of a tweet, tweet millions data is coming happen. But what we want to find, why all the like NGO partners or UN they want to find some actionable information from this mass data. Let me show you one sample. OK. This are our maps. I load it first. Let's go to Nepal. But this map is real time. So somebody asked that, please looking for Joshua. He's in Nepal. But it cannot be two days or three days later. It has to be a real time. But this information in Twitter or in the Facebook, but we have to find this information in real time. That's why we said it's a find the needle in the haystack. So let's go back to my presentation. So our question is how you find the information in needle in the haystack. So our researchers and then some of our developers and then we are open source projects, our community developer. So we develop a code Ader and the micromappers. Ader means artificial intelligence for digital response, and the micromapper is for the crowdsourcing platform. The novelty of this stem is a combined with the human computing and the machine learning. So let's go to our component. So our architect. It's architecture is very simple. We have a collector and the taker and a, tra a trainer, and the we have dashboards. So collector is very, as 
name means you collect the data. So when people go to our system, they start based on keyword or geo bounding box, they find uh, some data. So when data is coming, also user, they can go to other website, they can download this data, they can use analysis, whatever they want. The power is in the tagger. That is the machine learning and the human computing is, comes here. So people, it's a basically uh, when we get the data collection, we push to our class platform and the people is uh, taking. They classify the, okay, this is uh, about the health. This is about the shelter. They need the medical help or something, etc. And then, so basically humans are teaching the machine. Oh, this means is this. So our machine learning is a machine is learning from the human. It start automatically classifier. It classify the data. So it's very powerful. Uh, for example, we can find a need or infrastructure damage. In some cases, we are looking for rumors. And once this data is happening, and then we go to dashboard, and then we show the map and then we show the statistic and then we show the classified information. Based this information, decision maker or crisis responder, they can make decisions. So like uh, they can dispatch medical help or they can send um, some like a food or some other issue. So let's deep dive in. So text classification, this is our pipeline. Actually, we do text and image both, but their pipelines are a little bit different because of the nature. So let's look at the text. So basically, we collect the data. So data is in, and there's some black box is happening, and you have to outside so people can see it. So that inside of our Ader tagger, that is our black box. So in the black box, we have the trainer and the prediction. To predict, we need a model, means some black box. You, you give input, you give the output. That is a black box. So basically, when you get data, so we have a feature. So for example, you are interesting about the need or medical, we call some kind of this kind of things as a feature, feature. So we make a matrix. And then people start teaching. This means it's the medical. This means about the infrastructure damage. And then we learn from there, and then we start building the model. It's, a on, it's like an on-demand modeling. It's not like a we mo build a model a few months ago and then reusing it. No, it's not. It's like a online, always active. So we start, we build a model, and the model is created. And then people start helping the machine. Oh, your model is OK, but you can improve more. So we get the more inputs, so we get the evaluate, we evaluate the model again, and the, our models are getting improved, improved each time. So model is ready. So once model is ready, we get the raw data from the Twitter or Facebook or news, and then we also find some information with the features, and then we give the input to our model. Model is giving some kind of a tag. It says it's about the need, it's about the infrastructure damage and blah, blah, blah. And then this is a keep going during the, our activation. So that is uh, how our machine learning is wrong. So I mentioned that people are teaching. So our approach is supervised classification. This is uh, very accurate, but it's pretty costly because we need a people's help or somebody has to teach. Without the help, it cannot be happen. But uh, in our nature is uh, humanitarian, so a lot of people, like uh, online, they are willing to help. So in our case, getting the humans to help, like uh, labeling data is uh, pretty easy. So for this, there's a lot of uh, different techniques about the supervisor classification technique, but we choose the, we choose the random forest. Random forest is uh, pretty accurate, you know, compared with the deep learning is less. But the random forest was so, you know, still is very accurate and still very good. And then for random forest implementation, we use the Weka. The region is Weka is the interface for the Java. So whole our application built in the Spring or uh, J2EE. So integration is Weka was so easy. That is the region we are using the Weka and the random forest. 
So let's go to image. It's the same. So we got the data. I'm, I'm showing the, some aerial image by the drone. And though we people is a classify, we get the annotation. And then model is a building, and though we get the output. So image classification pipeline is a little bit different because of the nature. So when you get the data and the annotation, what we have to do, we have to fixalize it. Make so one by one, we have to fixalize it we, because we need to find the object. It's a house or a bridge and blah, blah, blah. So we, that is the region. For that, we're using the CNN and the CRF. And for that, for the package, we use the deep lab. And the one segmentation is done, next phase is so we have to find the texture. Because sometimes when you get the image, it's very hard to distinguish is the ground, or it's a building, or it's a ground, or whatever. So it's very hard. So we have to identify the texture. So with that algorithm, we use the Fisher vector with the CNN layer. And then we do, uh, uh, after that, all segmenting is done. And then we're using the SVM to classify. And the model is a building. And then once classifier is running, we, can, we know that this is a background or, or non-damage, or medium damage, or severe. So as you can see picture, that is the area image we got the Benoit 2. And then that is the ground truth means that our volunteer annotated. And that, that is the, our algorithm is comes out. So let's iterate the story again. So case. So you know the wild beast migration. So let's assume that one million wild beasts a day. So traditionally what we do is the our task is a tag, color tag, whenever shortly after they are alive. So traditionally, put the people, there's a one channel, animals going, they check, check, check. But you know you cannot you cannot do in the real time. So what is the human solution, right? Very simple. You add another lane. So oh more people. We can we have a lot of people, so we can do do. But still, it's very slow because you know, the volume of the one million wild beasts a day, you cannot control. So actually, based on our, our calculation, if you handle one million uh, wild beasts, you need to 500 Maasai 24-7. We cannot do that. That's why we introduced Ader and MicroMapper. So MicroMapper, uh, Ader, we can do 30, 40 uh, tagging per second. We can increase more. Basically, our approach is so we get channel, okay? So we tag, but we get uh, some copy for human. Like uh, sometimes it's very hard to understand. So like uh, we are teaching Java 101 to undergrad and uh, how you write the hello world. So it's a teaching and then eventually it's a learning from the machine and uh, we, our accuracy is to increase. That is our approach. All right, so let's go to here. That is overall our architecture. So basically, we have the input, all the social media, and some images. And we have the data collection. Once the data is collect, we publish Redis, and it goes to Tagger. And it's static tagging. Also, it put the test buffer for annotation. And then once annotation get, it push back. So it improve the model. And then this kind of information push to Redis, and we put the output. So you can download, you can do. So I have uh, one minute. So actually, I'm learning one collection, my local. So let me show this. OK. So data is coming. So I already built, because I tagged some, because the tagging is uh, taking time. So once data is coming, it start classify it giving some information. And you can see that. And then if you go to iSpace, my uh, models locate here. So I can see my models are building. So this one is update whenever needed. OK, that is about it. And then let me give some statistics. So we are operating about the three years, about three years. So we listened our activation was a hurricane map you. And we have some data, so a lot of agency they are using. And as I mentioned, we depend, we are open source. 
sometimes we need a developer who help. So our partner or our community help. So you can, if you can join our group and if, if you can help us to improve our application, it will be very good for humanity. All right, thank you.